There's currently 47 characters in Honkai Star Rail as of making this video, which is probably more characters than there are women on Earth. Shout out to Hoeyverse for inventing women. 26 of those are 5 star characters, and with every new character doing more than the last, it's pretty hard to keep track of what characters are actually worth picking up for new players. So with that said, here are my 5 best 5 stars for new and free to play players, not in any particular order. My name is Braxophone, and let's get started. The first character and one of the best characters to pick up for new players in my opinion is actually a brand new unit. Aventurine puts this game and your survival on easy mode, and I don't just mean because he's luckier than Fog. With Aventurine on your team, you basically have access to Gilgamesh's vault, if Gilgamesh's vault was full of poker chips. Every time Aventurine triggers a follow-up attack, he shields your team for a ton of effective health, and all you have to do to trigger his follow-up is gain enough stacks through using his ult, other follow-up attacks, or literally sitting there doing nothing. Not to mention his skill also gives your whole team a shield, and it can stack to some extent. The best measure for not dying is to not take damage. If you don't take damage, you can't die. Wow. Aventurine also gives your covered teammates 50% effect res to eliminate the need for a cleansing character, and his entire kit scales off of defense, with him even giving himself crit rate to do more damage based off of his defense. With access to a ton of free-to-play friendly light cones, Aventurine is easily one of the best pickups in all of Honkai Star Rail, especially for new players, or anyone struggling with survival. And he's, uh, you know. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, if you're looking for a good place to order anime or Japanese things, check this out. This video is sponsored by Zen Market, the online store that lets you shop in Japan. If you're a collector of Japanese merchandise or just really down bad, you should check them out. Basically, they serve as a proxy to get Japanese merchandise shipped all around the world, and they make it super easy. You can shop on places like Rakuten, Amazon Japan, Yahoo Auctions, Mercari, and over 10,000 other Japanese stores. Now, I personally shop on JP Mercari a lot. I bought some Pokemon cards and sent them in to get graded, so of course I'll let you guys know how that turns out, but I will say that they arrived from Zen Market in absolutely perfect condition, carefully packaged, no damage to anything, and it was awesome. When you buy on Zen Market, someone purchases the item for you, and they get it stored until you've collected all of the items that you actually want to send. Then you put together a parcel, and it ships all of the items together. Because it's worldwide, it supports over 19 languages, and features multiple different shipping methods. If you register for a Zen Market account and use the promo code Braxophone, you can get 1,000 Zen points, which is equivalent to 1,000 yen that can be used towards international shipping. Make sure to register with the link down below. And once again, thanks Zen Market for sponsoring the video. The second character on this list is actually one of the newest ones, and it's technically two characters. Hear me out. Ruan Mate is an insanely valuable character, providing your team with tons of permanent buffs. Her talent gives your team passive speed, which helps you get more opportunities to attack, but she also gives a ton of damage bonus with her skill, as well as weakness break efficiency, helping you break enemies even faster. In early game, this is even more helpful because break does so much damage. In end game, Ruan Mate can give your whole team a 68% damage bonus by simply existing and using her skill once every three turns. She's also SP positive, meaning that you are gaining skill points by playing her, allowing your damage dealers to do more. When I met Ruan Mei in game, she must have had her ult up, because my resistances were penetrated. I was stun locked by her very strange dialogue. As it turns out, she's kind of a freak when it comes to experiments. She's managed to break the game in unique ways. For example, break extension that increases your window of opportunity for full damage attacks. And the personal damage that she adds through this is huge, much like her res penetration and her personality. With all that said though, the newest character coming to Star Rail, Robin, is similarly powerful to Ruan Mei in that she gives a lot of damage bonus with her skill. But instead of speed, res pen, break efficiency, and break extension, Robin gives a massive attack bonus, some crit damage, extra crit damage on top of that for follow-up attacks, and an instant action forward on your whole team on ultimate. This means that by running Robin, you can guarantee your DPS get more attack attacks every fight. Both of these units are absolutely crazy in all the teams you can play them in. Ruan Mei and Robin excel at multi-DPS teams like the IPC team and DOT setups, but both of them can still be great single character buffers. If you don't have either one on your account, you can't really go wrong picking either one up. There are tons of great things about Honkai Star Rail, from character designs to fun and diverse game types. The best kind of account to have to truly experience peak Star Rail is one without Sampo, and the second best to have is one with amazing sustainers. Playing Hoho -Ho is basically extraordinary 
distortion. Except it's not really your fault because Tail's existence is all the threat you need to get her to use you her special powers to batter your team. Huo Huo is a cleanse machine. A healer with six cleanses as ready for your team as I was for Jinglu to come home seven times. Every turn Huo Huo's healing is up, she has an opportunity to cleanse your teammate to heal from her passive. Every single time your teammates ult or take a turn, they will receive healing and proc that cleanse chance. But the best part about Huo Huo is actually her ultimate, which gives your whole team 20% energy back to their bank at a high level, and also massively increases their attack for two turns. She's incredibly useful in single and multi-damage comps, and her ability to batter your whole team makes you able to get more solid ult, buff, and debuff uptime from friendly ultimates. Her kit is incredibly simple, but it's effective, and I don't see Huo Huo going anywhere anytime soon. She's a great pickup for literally anyone. Okay, guys, I swear I'm not biased. The fourth character on this list is the second best DPS in the game, and it's pretty understandable why you'd want to pick her up. Jing Liu does ridiculous damage in the right setups, and the right setups aren't hard to get. As a destruction unit, Jing Liu dishes out a ton of AoE damage, but the catch is that her single target damage is still stupidly high. The only thing worse than a single target character getting power crept by another single target character is a multi-target character power creeping the single target character in single target. <laughs> and Jing Liu isn't the only one to do this. For example, Acheron has already broken that barrier, and Dunhung Imbibitor Lune was already good without Sparkle, and with Sparkle he's even better. But the reason that Jinglu is one of the best pickups is that her barrier to entry is incredibly low. She gives herself an absurd amount of crit rate and a massive attack boost, making her deal high damage even if your relics suck ass. That's without mentioning that one of her best light cone options is actually a free to play Herda shop light cone. Combine that with the fact that she can use teams entirely made of 4 star units, and Jinglu is one of the most approachable and strongest characters for new players. Honorable mentions. You don't have to use that, Zay. I just thought I'd throw it in there. Before we wrap up the top five, I have a couple honorable mentions. They would be on this top five list, but if I named the video top seven, it would get less clicks, so get scammed, idiot. Pushuan is incredible. If she was a little bit taller, she might have been number five. Have you ever wanted to play D against an impact, but have her actually be a useful character? Pushuan is just that, but without the cool punk aesthetic and with insecurities about her height. Imagine your Tingyuns taking a ton of damage over and over. I know, not very hard to imagine. Bushuan actually takes some of that damage, reduces it, and moves some to herself. In fact, she does that for the whole team. Bushuan's gimmick is gradual damage mitigation and throwing herself in the line of fire, but she actually comes with a few tools that help her stand out. The first one is a self-heal that keeps her HP from going too low, and the second is a team-wide HP and crit rate buff. This really helps newer players specifically, since it makes everyone more sustainable and also compensates for bad relics. There's only a couple downsides to Fushuan. She's not great against dots, and specifically in high-level Swarm Disaster and Golden Gears, she can end up getting one-shot if you don't have a shield. There's only one thing that beats damage mitigation and infinite healing, and it's infinite damage mitigation. Which is why, in my opinion, Aventurine is a better pickup, but Fushuan is still a top-tier unit and definitely not a bad pickup. Acheron is the current best DPS in the game, and it really shows with her usage. Her ultimate dishes out so much damage that it actually crashed my PC the first time. Because she's the best DPS for endgame content with the right setup, it's a no-brainer that you would want to pick her up and build her. With an ult that could break anything and be battery just by playing debuffers, she's an amazing character overall. The only real downside to Acheron is that before endgame, you may struggle to see numbers that are better than Jing Liu's due to the fact that she is more restrictive with the units she can actually use, and even if you have Pela and Gwenaifen, her best 4-star light cone, Good Night and Sleep Well, is locked behind Gacha, and her best true free-to-play option, Fermata, requires her to be played alongside Kafka or Black Swan to really optimize, because if you play Sambo for that, you're just losing overall damage. With that in mind, I don't think she's as good for early game, but it'd be a crime to skip the best damage dealer for hard content, especially if you're in the game for the long run. The final character on this list is, surprise surprise, another support. If you're looking for a girl that can ruin your life, and if you're not a Branya haver, Sparkle is the best pickup for any player using hypercarry teams, which is a majority of team compositions. Sparkle has a 50% action advance usable every turn on your teammates, which might not seem great compared to Branya's 100%, but the way actions work in this game, a 50% advance forward ends up doing the same as 100% most of the time anyways. If you build a fast Sparkle, she basically becomes your main DPS's speed threshold, but the kicker with Sparkle is that her ultimate actually gives skill points back, making her a support that can skill every turn, but still ends up gaining one skill point over three turns. Her skill also also gives the biggest crit damage bonus in the game, which is usable on a majority of characters, and her talent and ultimate also grant passive damage bonuses. All of these things combined make her beat out Branya and Ruan Mei for most hyper carry comps when you look at damage. Sparkle is insanely good, and despite a lot of people hating her for some reason, it's undeniable that she is one of the strongest supports in the entire game. And after all that, uh, 
marketing. Who doesn't love silly, goofy women? Subscribe for more! And if you do to Star Rail, tell me who you're going for. If you made it to the end of this video, I wanted to take a second to plug my second Twitch channel. Recently, I figured out that the reason I'm so drained every day is because I'm on camera, and honestly, I just don't really like being on camera all the time. So I started a VTuber Twitch channel, and I've been having a ton of fun on it. If you guys want to check it out, it's twitch.tv slash Ash Alric, and there I'm playing all sorts of games, but also some Star Rail. So, thanks gamers.